Hi, Casey Dreyer here at George Washington University in Washington, D.C. The Planetary Society is sponsoring something called Humans Orbiting Mars, the next steps in human spaceflight for NASA and the world. We want to get people out to Mars to explore, look for signs of water and life, learn more about the cosmos and our place within it. So in working together, I think we can all, dare I say it, change the world. In the next day and a half, we're having over 30 speakers in a dozen different presentations and panels. And I cannot wait to hear what this conversation is going to be like. First of all, thank you all so much for coming. What we want to do is send people to orbit Mars because it will change the world. It wasn't that long ago in human history that Copernicus showed that the world was orbiting the sun, not the other way around. You just think about the discoveries that will be made in the next few years, the world is going to change. I was nine years old when this picture was taken. It changed the way everybody felt about the universe and about his or her, what I like to call, place in space. If we are able to send humans orbiting Mars, it will have an equally profound effect. People will think very differently about the cosmos and our place within it. We are here to examine this proposition that by carefully designing the constraints we are working under, accepting them, and building an architecture around it, we can in fact construct a long-term, cost-constrained, executable Humans to Mars program. The International Space Station, you need to hand it off. Maybe it becomes a commercial entity, maybe you stop funding it, the worst case maybe it goes into the Pacific Ocean. I don't see how you can have both 22% of the budget supporting the International Space Station and really significantly proceed with Humans to Mars. The Soviet Union challenged us first with uh, Sputnik and then with the flight of Yuri Gagarin. None of us, I think, are walking around expecting a president to not only announce a challenging space goal, but to provide the resources to achieve it. That's the reality that we're placing today's discussions in. It's not a four-year or an eight-year program. It's a, if we're talking about humans to Mars orbit in 2033, so it's at least three presidents. As my predecessor, Lou Friedman, said, when you go exploring, two things are going to happen you're going to make discoveries. You will discover something, whether it's your backyard or another planet. But the other thing is you'll have an adventure, and it's that adventure that will, I, I believe, engage all humankind. I believe we have reached a consensus that will enable humans to go out to Mars and do some basic research, learn about the Martian environment, look for signs of water and life, change the world, bring back samples, enabling people everywhere to explore the cosmos and know our place where we're It's exciting, look at this, everybody's into it. One, two, three. So that was a great workshop. And it seems like that there is a way forward for humans to Mars. You don't need to double NASA's budget to do this. That's a really important point. There is an incredible potential for human exploration of Mars that doesn't have to break the bank. We're doing the work now that could potentially impact the next few decades of human spaceflight.